computer. There we go. Now we're, I guess we're okay. So I will get that the way we're supposed to, and I will put on my earphones, and we're ready to go. Let me uh, let me just go do this here, which is to admit all the people that are waiting right now. Okay. Oh wow, and there are a lot of them too. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of them. Let me just get rid of a few things here. Close window. Close window. There we go. Wow, we got we got a whole is is the is shitload a good term to use here? A shitload of people, <laughs> especially oh, when you G consider who Steve they all Bender. are. Yes, How you doing, definitely. Steve? <laughs> I want nice, to once, once again. I can only stay a little bit, but wanted to say hello to everybody. So well, we want. We're glad you could. Yeah, I'll be here for a few minutes and then I'll get out. Charlie Wallace, hello, Charlie. Hi. How are you this uh, this fine afternoon? Trying to keep dry. Yeah. Uh, Scott <laughs> Boddicker. Hey. Hey, Alex. Can hey. you hear me? Yeah. Well, how, okay, how long has your hair grown now? Uh, long. I don't know. Well, <laughs> six years worth. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. You've really given up on life, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Edward Berger. Hi. How are you? Good, good, good. Yeah, and uh, let's see here. Mike Chisholm, how are you? Peace and love. I'm doing real good, Alex. How are you, buddy? I'm uh, I'm uh, uh, I think I'm doing okay. <laughs> I'm I'm in the middle of a whole bunch of medical confusion. So I, I <laughs> go through well, I told you stop reading the internet. Oh no, no, forget about that <laughs> part of it. It gets it gets it, it got even more interesting, but I'll tell you afterwards, Shecky, because Marjorie will go, don't talk about it. <laughs> you know. Um mm. but it's uh you know I, doctors do not agree with each other, do they? <laughs> In fact, you know what I always hated? You know, you ever you ever have a car and it it uh I don't know, you got something wrong with it, so you take it down and they go, uh gee, gee um, you know, you've never you, you have problems with your car. And you go, Oh, okay. Who's been doing this? Well, I was taking it to another mechanic, but I thought I'd bring it to you now. And immediately the first thing comes out of his mouth is, well, man, he has not been doing right by you. Let me tell you what's wrong with your car. Here we go. And, and it was, I, I found out years ago, it was the same way. It was the same way with dentists. Yeah. You would go to a new dentist and they'd say, who was your old dentist? Oh, I don't know. I was going to so-and-so. And yeah, I decided that I'd give you a try. And I go, boy, did they take bad care of your teeth? <laughs> but let me tell you what I can do for your teeth. Right. And then they, they find a whole laundry list of things that need to be done as they're deciding what yacht they want to buy now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How much money can I make off this guy? Yeah. So I, I don't, I really don't trust two doctors to agree with each other on anything. Why do you think they call it a practice? They're just practicing. Yeah, they're just practicing. And then after you're through practicing and you get it right, give me a call back. <laughs> you know, so. Well, remember the days where they used to just play golf every Wednesday, you know. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They play, and, and that was better because now they can't afford to go play no. golf. <laughs> but what they do is they overload their practice with people so that you've got like, uh, you know, I, my doctor, Marjorie, you know, our doctor, I won't say who he is, but I went to this thing because he'd started a thing called a concierge service <laughs> that was the shitty service he was giving you before just got better. Or, or you have to pay $2,000 a year to get the same shitty service. I don't know. But anyway, I go to this thing. And he invited a lot of his, I like that. I was going to say customers, but they're really patients, aren't they? No, truthfully, no. customers. Okay. So uh, I, I go, uh, gee, how many people are here? And there was something like, I know, a thousand people there. Oh. And, and I said to somebody next to me, I said, how many people does he actually have seeing him in his practice? He says, somewhere around 3,000. Oh. Now, now, then you start to question, 
how does he remember me? <laughs> you know? And I suddenly noticed after that, I went to doctors and they would come in, you know, they, after the nurse does whatever she does, she weighs you for some odd reason just to insult you on your new weight. Okay. And then uh, the doctor comes in, he sits down and he's looking at your charts. But what he's really looking at is what your name is, you know, uh, who your wife is. I may, may have be listed on there, you know, so, so how's Marjorie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember my middle name? Well, no, I don't have it here. No, I don't. <laughs> I mean, but this one doctor, he was every time I went to see him, he would constantly be looking at the chart to say, oh, and then, you know, how's the what do you call it doing? And, you know, all he knows is what's on the chart. He doesn't remember me, you know, so that's why I don't I, I don't trust any of this. Yeah. Oh. Hi, right, Marjorie. I'm not even going to respond to that. Yeah, she likes to think all her doctors absolutely knows who she is. I never said that. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Do, do you get a feeling though sometimes, since you're the one who goes to more doctors than I do, that, that some of your doctors don't remember who you are? A lot of them don't remember who I am. So how do you remind them? They know. They look at the chart when I, I was. Look at I you know, I, I, I just remind him by saying, Emmeline came in for syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember you. Yeah, sure you do. <laughs> well, I never had that. And, of course, we got uh, we got uh, Lynn LaFrisco and we got Jeff and we got Mandy. Look at Mandy. Hi. She's, she's all working her ass off there at work. Sorry. You know, playing with other people's money. Isn't that fun? Yes. Uh, Rick? I'm listening. What? I'm listening. Yeah, no, I know you're listening. You know. Rick, how you doing? I'm good, but I looked at my Fidelity account, and there's a withdrawal for $50,000. Whoa. There's a withdrawal Holy for $50,000? Yeah, and I have no idea what it is, so I'm waiting for the guy to call me back. <laughs> wow. Well, me well, where apparently, 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 I got your password right. <laughs> I was gonna say oh, wow. you got a new girlfriend. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Now, why would fifty thousand dollars be missing from your fidelity account outside it says of the withdrawal? Pack? That's all it says. Wow. Shecky, let me know how it goes. I've got probably three dozen clients in Fidelity. If there's a breach of some sort, I would love to hear about that just to make sure. Oh, I'll let you know next <laughs> week when the guy calls me back. But it's just if it was like let's say forty two five, it'd be like Oh, okay. But it's just such a round number, can we call it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it were if it were a jagged number, you'd know maybe it was something you did sign. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's like wait okay, a minute, you have fifty thousand dollars? <laughs> <laughs> Not, Not anymore, anymore, he doesn't. <laughs> well, well, yeah. the, only, the only fidelity account <laughs> I have is the serious account. That was my 401k, which I then just switched over to not being a 401k anymore. And that, uh, you know, that's only something like about $15,000. So if anybody wants to steal it from me, uh, guess my password. <laughs> <laughs> and of yeah. course, there's Marjorie. Hello, Marjorie. Hi. <laughs> who's been very good to me the last couple of days and very nice and very I'm considerate listening. about my craziness. And, you know, yeah. So, Alec okay. has a tendency to fast forward tapes in his head. Oh, I got oh, no, 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 no. I, I mean, I have a... Um, Alec, you fast forward everything. No, but no, but no, no, no. Here's what I do. I have to death. No, I don't okay. fast forward. I fast forward to the worst possible outcome. Which is death. <laughs> well, and your point is? The point you know, is. One of these days, I'm going to drop dead, and you're going to be sorry you even said that today. People here are going to be calling the show if you know how to turn it on. You know. Fast forward. Yeah, but look at last year. You had the prostate trouble. They fixed it. Yeah, I guess. 
Yeah. <laughs> this late, latest thing is just two entirely different opinions. Yeah. Let's not even go there. Yeah. But anyway, so I always think of the worst possible outcome because that way I control the situation. Oh, my God. Does he? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I, I guess the sympathy I've been feeling all week long has disappeared now. <laughs> 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 and afterwards, she'll apologize and say, I'm sorry. Well, anyway, Steve, how you, how's your mental state been? Uh, I don't know. I'm fine. I, you know, so um, nothing, nothing, nothing very exciting going on. You were going through what some of us Jews that. refer to as surus, right? I've been going through. We went through some service, yeah. It's uh, you know, just family stuff. But you know, it's it's um, it's better. You know, things are okay. No. Yeah. Oh, good. Do, yeah. do do Gentiles have service? Not in the same way. Explain what it is. <laughs> well, and I'll talk. Die, you see. Service is trouble. Just uh, it's just... service is basically trouble. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. She's but I'm a, a Jew, so. Not, and she's not a Jew, but you can still have Soros. But now you know the word for it. I had a Soros on my tuchus, but I had it removed. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Okie dokie. Good. <laughs> so hey, anyway. Hey, Alex, I just finished uh, recording a Letterman podcast with uh, a guy by the name of Vinny Favali, and we yeah, gave I'm... you some love on that show. We gave you some serious shout outs on that show. I, I think the world of Vinny. It's a wonderful, yeah. fine upstanding person you know. well it goes two ways and we uh and we spent a little bit of time on the show talking about you so that comes oh. out in a couple of weeks good good what's Vinny doing these days uh, um he, he was need, he was the he, guy that was in charge of, of literally cbs's envoy to the letterman show would be that yes. the best way to yeah. describe it yeah. and, yeah. and he the, wrote a musical on the back deck and the, the back deck is the the, the control, control room. room, and the back deck is the what the 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 table behind the, the table. director and the associate director and right. whomever. But anyway, and then he got uh, when once uh, Colbert came in, they didn't want him, right? They got rid of him. Well, he spent about a year there and pretty much ran the show, and then they yeah jettisoned him. Yeah. Using some flimsy excuse. Well, no, some again, I don't want to go it, too much into it. Vinny was Vinny, and some women complained about his demeanor, can we call it? Yeah, but you see, these people who have a demeanor, okay, had a demeanor. They don't have that <laughs> demeanor now because it's not in the best interest to have that demeanor. Had a demeanor which some people later, when they were told it was offensive, found offensive is yeah. that the best way of describing it because Vinny wouldn't want to upset anybody okay. no and also again not to go into it you know you'd be on the back deck and some woman or man would come on the show and Vinny go gay and then one of the women on the back deck go Vinny shut up <laughs> yeah yeah I mean but I mean this wasn't horrible ugly stuff and yet, no. uh, and, and we can talk about it because he made the press, didn't he? He made the newspapers on this deal if, uh, when he was let go. Yeah, and he got a very good settlement, as I understand. I never asked him the <laughs> Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is that it wasn't, it was we're not like telling tales out of school because it was in the newspapers and people heard about this and it was general knowledge that he had been let go because of speaking. Some, in, some people saying whatever yeah yeah so anyway you know i mean come on there were days when uh uh you know this is back 30 years ago where you'd see somebody and you you go fag you know and and nobody thought anything about it because it was meant in humor you know yeah and that's what Today, he, you, you know as i that. say that's what he was you know on the back deck he'd just go like woman x gay yeah yeah and we'd all just kind of like shut up yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But anyway, he's a sweet guy, a nice guy. I always liked him. Always liked him. One of the things uh, he's working on right now is a deep dive into Christmas music. And he's uh, writing a book about the history of Christmas music. And uh, like, like, for example, he tells the story about Jingle Bells. 
and how it was originally um, uh, a song that was uh, showed at a at a blackface theater and and the history of all of these Christmas music. So he is like way knee deep down the rabbit hole uh, with a book that's coming out, I think, next year. So that's you asked what he's working He'll on. He's coming out on the 4th of today. July with his luck. <laughs> <laughs> so hell, Mike hell of a guy, hell of a Mike conversation. Did an interview with our friend Steve Weiner last, you know, that aired yeah. this week. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, good. Not good. because of me. It was all because of Steve Weiner, but yes, phenomenal. Uh, really, really good conversation. And we've got other stuff coming out of that because of it as well. So yeah, good times for the Letterman podcast right now. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, 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 what was I going to say? Oh, I, it was something that I forgot now. That's been happening to me lately. Here we go again. Oh, what? <laughs> no, I've just been forgetting stuff lately. Yeah. Well, I think I told you, I've got this insane cruise I booked for Christmas. Yeah, oh, Singapore. Tell Singapore. Singapore. You go, you, you go to Singapore. And then you go to Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam. Hmm. Awesome. Hmm. We're not at war with them anymore, are we? No, no. Oh, so man. I'll be um, podcasting to you from there, from one of those ports. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, have a good time. But why do you say that's crazy? If you knew what it cost. <laughs> I know what it cost. That's more than 50000 You told me the other day. <laughs> yeah, there's the 50000 well, right no, What was my answer to you? You've got it. You don't have kids. You don't have a wife. You don't have anybody that you're taking care of, right? Except you. Except, <laughs> except, except me, eventually. Um. And who knows? I may not live long enough to have you take oh, care of me. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> I think I told you this flight. Awesome. The flight will be eighteen thousand dollars. Just the flight? Well, I'm going to do business class. Yeah. Well, the flight is an eighteen thousand dollars. Yes, it is. Yeah. Wait a minute. I... Wait a minute. It, hold on a second. Oh. Eighteen. Oh, eighteen thousand dollars. Okay, I thought you said it's that. also eighteen hours each 18, way. Eighteen thousand right. dollars. No, you mean eighteen hundred dollars? No, 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 no. Not in business. They're first class. Eighteen thousand's oh. right. <laughs> eighteen thousand. Are you crazy? <laughs> well, if not, I'm going to sit in the steerage for eighteen yeah, yeah. hours. <laughs> There's no way. You it's a good that. chair. Well, you said <laughs> that the actual the actual tour itself. I think it's about twenty grand, maybe. Okay, so it's eighteen grand to fly there. Yeah, I, I just know. Are you out of your Shecky? Out of boy. Oh, wait a minute, you just said that. Is that Thai Airlines or something like that? Or? It's like uh, Singapore Air. Singapore. Oh, that's, you're gonna get one of the, so good. That, yeah, They're that's awesome. one of the one of the best first classes ever. It's supposedly like a five star airline. Yeah, yeah but, but I, I can't, Marjorie. Could you imagine us spending eighteen thousand? Well, we'd be double that for the two of us, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think to, to Dubai, what is it? Uh, Emirates Air. It's twenty five grand to go from like New York to Dubai or Los Angeles to Dubai. So it's a lot of money. How much did it cost us to go to China? It didn't cost us anywhere near that. Yeah, but Marjorie had her company pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I paid for mine, and I did it in air miles. We were yeah. I, first. I was it? No, I, we were in in coach. But oh. the thing is, we no, took. We're in business. We're in business coach. Was it biz, Was that business? Wasn't yeah. business class. It was like premium. Like premium, oh, premium, premium economy. Coach. Yeah. Premium yeah. economy. Yeah. Yeah. But, Which, but the thing the way, was, this was the mileage. This, this was China Airlines. And the, the, the plane is different than the plane you travel on now. There was a lot of room in that plane. I but mean, it's also, I'm traveling at Christmas. So right. that's where they're also getting oh, you. Okay, but $18,000 flying. Wow. Again, I'm 18, joking, 000, but 18, I got it. Yeah, but $18,000 before you can, you're entitled to spend the 20000 Yeah, yeah. 
well, maybe I'll get my 50 grand back from Fidelity. So if Marjorie, <laughs> if Marjorie and I decide to take the same exact trip, the two of us, it would run somewhere around $80,000. Yeah. To see a country we once bombed. I don't know, you know? <laughs> Do you, get to, do you get to travel down the Ho Chi Minh Trail? You know, It's Saigon. Oh, it's Saigon. Oh, that's all? You only get to see Saigon? In Vietnam, only Saigon. I think Ho Chi Minh City is supposed to be much nicer these days. Yeah. Yeah, um, look, I'm crazy. Hey, send us postcards. <laughs> send us postcards. You know. Uh, no, I'll, you know, I'll Zoom you. Uh, Mm -hmm. yeah and then uh, what is it when are you going out to california uh a week from thursday and that flight's only costing him 400 nothing no that flight's costing me nothing because i'm doing miles oh you're doing miles can't you do miles with this other thing that's a lot of miles so. i don't think i have miles left <laughs> oh really okay because i we got about three hundred thousand miles marjorie you know I lost all the China miles, by the way. Why'd you lose all the China miles? You didn't use them up in enough time. Oh, really? You had to go back to China or you could go anywhere? Anywhere, but we didn't use them. So we oh, lost. You, wait, you didn't tell me we got to use them. I would have. Well, the last them. two years, where, you gonna, where were you going? Yeah. 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 Well, down to visit Vernon Nunn in Kentucky. <laughs> yeah. Right, Vernon? You, you can almost walk here. <laughs> uh, yeah oh man mm. well anyway it's a strange world in which we live isn't it you know oh, yeah. anybody watch the new game of thrones not yet no i haven't seen it yet i've never watched the old game of thrones <laughs> well you know uh, once you get into the fourth season it starts getting good my wife got me into a series called Cobra. Really? That's it's done a, it, it, well. It's on PBS. It's a PBS producer. It's a British produced uh, series, and it's about solar flares and the disruption that it causes and all this kind of stuff. Oh, not beat show. Serious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Solar flares uh, screw up uh, communications. Oh. There are times uh, during the year when... Uh, all of a sudden, you may notice that, especially if you have, if you if you're doing satellite delivery to your home, all of a sudden it goes out, and that's because of solar flares. Aren't solar flares and super volcanoes the uh, the thing that could that the instantaneous thing that could happen at any time that could wipe us all out? Or a solar flare could take out the entire grid on the planet, could it not? So could Trump. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I want to bring this up to Shecky too, because wait, wait, what happened to Shecky? Did we, oh, ah, oh, there, oh, he moved. He moved. He moved around because we lost um, somebody. Steve Bender. Uh, uh, did you read about our mayor? Well, hey. he hates our mayor. Okay, but I just read about our mayor, and um, you're going to really enjoy this one about the place he has. He eats. He ate 14 times last month for dinner. This one restaurant that's owned by his friends who are former uh, convicts. <laughs> and I mean, it's, it's, it was the most horrible. It was in the New York Times. It wasn't even like in the Post or something like that. It was in the New York Times about how he goes to this restaurant. It's owned by people who've spent considerable time in prison. But you know, we should forgive them, of course. But yeah. it was just that they they're they're not exactly the most savory of human beings. And our well, mayor. Yeah. Well, what about our governor now? They're not called inmates anymore. They're incarcerated people. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't call them incarcerates. <laughs> I don't know about any of that, but one day I would like someone on this planet to refer me as a savory individual. That sounds really good. <laughs> well, certain my wife has never referred to me as savory, but uh, there are places on the planet where we still have cannibals and they might be able to do that. 
maybe mm. unsavory. <laughs> <laughs> that one I think I've gotten a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry. We want we want we we want something that's savory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. It's just a it's a crazy world in which we live. Yeah. Well, I was reading today. Apparently, the car companies have a new scam where you're forced to pay several thousand dollars for perks that you don't want. Well, it's, it's worse than that. BMW is now doing things yes. like subscription. So yes. if you want your heated seats to turn on, it's $50 yeah. a month. Yeah. Or whatever. That's it. You can get heated seats, but to get them turned on costs 50 bucks a month. <laughs> Are you kidding? No. no. No, so every start. car will come with every feature. It just whether it gets turned on or not is the is the idea. Yeah, oh. the engine's a hundred dollars a month. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like wow. their their quote new revenue stream. And I hate to tell you what you're going to have to pay for the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a way to get money. And like they off. apparently charge you if you have that thing that opens the door with your little whatever it's called. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, key fob. Key fob, yeah. Wow. They charge you for that now? Yep. BMW is starting to do it. You know that the others will follow along. No, no I, I think they are doing it. I think they're yeah, oh, they are. Oh, yeah. no, it's it's a lot of them. A lot of them are doing it already. Yeah. If you ever lose your keys. Oh, yeah. Oh. For, forget it. It's like $300. <laughs> then, yeah, this thing's like five or $600. Yeah. So what is this? Is this the razor and everything else is the razor blades now? Oh, well, it's razor. like cable TV. You know, as you know, you want Roku, you pay this. You want this, you pay that, you know. Well, I went to the, to the pharmacy the other day and I wanted to see if I, when I got this new razor, I got this yellow blade in it. It's a yellow colored blade. Mm. And the thing seems to go forever. Mm. You know, it doesn't seem to be wearing out. And it turns out that if you shave every day, which I don't, I only shave about once a week, this will um, uh, work for like uh, a whole month before you have to change blades. So I went to see well, how much these blades cost, right? <laughs> A pack of 12, which they say on the outside, good for a year. Oh, boy. All right. It's a month. 50 bucks. Yeah. 50 bucks for goddamn razor blades? Yeah. You out of your Well, they'll, they'll give you the razor more or less for free. Oh, yep. They're going to make their money on the blades. I got the yep. first blade for free, practically. Yeah. Okay. It's like printers and ink. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here, here, here's an interesting story that I. Uh, 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 there's this comic I I knew years ago, and he wound up on America's Got Talent. Okay, and his whole thing is doing stuff with like uh, PowerPoint presentations, and it's a comedy act. Okay. Oh, that guy's awesome. That engineer guy. Yeah. Don, he's awesome. Don I love him. Millen. And yes. I, I just think he's okay. But what he did bring up was the fact that. Printer ink, if you do it, just expand it out to the natural amount, okay, is $3,000 a gallon. Sure. sure. Yeah. He said, don't paint your house with this stuff. <laughs> yeah. $3,000 a gallon. Sure. He said, we can make printers that run on blood. It's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean... When you think about it, I mean, that's absolutely absurd. And, and I got an HP printer that requires that I can, I can get this thing where I get subscription to the ink, right? And that's great, but I don't want that because it's more expensive with the way I use ink than if I just buy the cartridges. Well, it turns out that once you, if you go into your HP, and at the very beginning, they ask you, oh, do you want to subscribe to uh, HP for extra little features to be added to your printer? Well, of course, you're going to say yes, right? Who doesn't want a few extra features, right? So I subscribe. Well, it turns out that once you subscribe, you can't use third-party cartridges. 
Oh. And they don't say this. Yeah. Isn't you know. there a law? There's a class action about that, I think. Now. Is there is there finally a class action? I believe so, there is. Yeah. Because that really bothers me. You know. Yeah, that's that's not right. Yeah. And the way Marjorie uses it, she uses all the ink in the house. <laughs> oh, give me a break. <laughs> I'm never gonna give you a break, dear. Hmm. I'll give you a Kit Kat bar. <laughs> no, but that's how they make their money. You know, they've got you. You know, we'll give you a printer for 200 bucks, but now you're stuck buying our ink. Forever. Yeah. 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 yeah no, I mean, I'm uh, now on the other hand, I saw what do they have? They have um, Canon. Okay. I, if I ever get rid of this thing, uh, I'm getting a Canon because Canon takes ink you put into it. Okay. Refillable cartridge. Refillable cartridges. And they're ch it's cheap. It's the cheapest way to refill. You have a have a, a printer that you refill with ink. Uh, they don't they don't charge you an arm and a leg for the for the ink. And well, you, for the and basic you, system, huh? how yeah. much do you, does it cost it's you? The to basic buy that? the basic Canon printer is about the same as the HP. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just that they, they apparently are not another Jewish word for you, Mandy Ganifs. <laughs> <laughs> Before we're through with this hour, Mandy's going to be a Jew. <laughs> so yes, there is a little class action. Oh, sorry. Yeah. What There's a we... class action lawsuit for exactly what you just said, that, yeah. it, that it made their printers incompatible with other cartridges. So you might want to look into that. Oh, good. I'll look into it. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> class action suit, you have to live long enough for it to come through. <laughs> And Marjorie, you'll get a dollar seventy-five. Marjorie, what did you sign up for? The stages. This I With these the eye drops. Suit on the eye drops that I take. But what is it based upon? Is it based upon it's just too high priced or? Yeah. Over yeah, but years. Marjorie, you're never going to see any money from that. Come on, let's. Yeah, the lawyers I will anyway. Well, I just signed up for some class action suit, which I doubt if I'll, you know, if I get it, I'll get $20. Yeah, yeah, but the lawyers will get a million dollars or whatever. Yeah. yeah. You know. Nobody likes lawyers. Boy, <laughs> I, I really wish I went to Camp Lejeune. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in 1985. Well, that, okay, that too. That you know. <laughs> Because but are you hearing all those commercials now for Camp Lejeune? Yeah, no, yeah. Our... Oh, yeah, yeah. There's some, some, some guy something who... in the water. Or I don't even know what it was. Yeah, if you well, lived well, if you well, lived well, to work near Camp Lejeune between the years of blah 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 and blah blah blah, you may be entitled to fifty cent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're advertising on all the uh, you know the news channels. Yeah, it's getting worse than the Medicare supplement. Uh, oh, really? Down here it is. Oh, wow. Medicare supplements. You know, Medicare supplement is not. Oh, supplements are fine. It's the ad, ad, advantage plan. That's what I mean. Yeah. Medicare Advantage. Yeah, yeah they're, they're trying to sell the advertising all over the place. Yeah, because once you sign up for that, you lose all, everything else. You can't go back. They, mm -hmm. Yes, you can. I think. I don't think so, Alex. Yeah. Wait a minute. Somebody just said you can. Who said it? I, I looked it up once because I thought you couldn't either, Marjorie, but you, you can the next year during sign -up. I don't trust it. <laughs> yeah, but we're about to have Joe Damas every five minutes doing commercials for Medicare yeah. supplements. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, uh, even worse, my old friend and former uh, control board operator at WMCA, Jimmy J. Walker, oh. Yeah, yes. he's doing them too. Yeah, has been doing those ads. Yeah, dynamite. You're gonna, you're gonna love these as advantage plans. They're dynamite. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Jimmy, have some dignity in your old age. Come on. I don't see, I don't see how they get by with that because they're 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 telling you a falsehood, saying this is going to add money back to your social security. What they don't tell you is that same money is going to go on to the bill for your supplement. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it does. Well, yeah. Yeah. 
That's how they make money. If they, well, they if tell they you that in some, in some states, you aren't going to have to pay for it. That you're not yeah, going to have to pay for yourself. They don't say which states. Huh? They don't say which states. Yeah. Yes. Alaska. It's always not your state. Well, I looked up New York for the hell of it, and we're 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 not one of them. <laughs> That's right. What a surprise. That's good, dear. Yeah. Well, you know, for me, I, I listen to the sports channels all the time. How many gambling ads do I need to hear? Oh, oh I'm kidding. Uh, that's all you hear. Oh, football now. Yeah. Yeah. It's college football. You want to bet on whomever, you know. Really? We have two propositions coming up here in November in California to not allow um, online gambling through the apps anymore because the Indian casinos are losing money because we're betting online on our phone. Oh, so. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> we're fucking over the Indians again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as, as though those 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 uh, uh, smallpox laden blankets weren't <laughs> enough. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's there's two uh, competing propositions and it's just and it's if you vote no on this one it means yes, if you vote yes on this one it means no. I mean, it's so confusing. Well, I'll tell you what the biggest problem is here in New York City, and you will agree with me, Shecky, and who else? Anybody else here from New York? Uh, Jeff. Comes well, Edward. Edward. Yeah. Edward, yeah. Edward. The um, the restaurants that have those rat oh, infested uh, what do they call them? Cabins or whatever they call them. Um, uh, outside every one of their restaurants because yeah. during COVID they felt that if they could build a shack outside on the street they could have somewhere they could eat I never could understand that because they didn't want you eating indoors because you could catch COVID but you could eat in one of these shacks outdoors that were completely covered so they were really indoors because right. you couldn't get COVID didn't make sense at all but anyway they let them do that in order to save the restaurant industry. And now mm -hmm. that COVID is gone and anybody can go into a restaurant that wants to wearing no mask at all. Guess what? These shacks are still out there and some mm -hmm. of them aren't even being used. They're using them as storage bins now. Yeah. I mean, or is sex shacks. <laughs> oh, that one I didn't hear, Shecky. Tell oh, us. Oh no! Apparently, there are people who go into these sheds for whatever. Margarine. Let's go what? up to our favorite restaurant. Let's go into their shed and have some sex <laughs> with anybody. No. Oh. And then a lovely meal afterwards. And a lovely and, meal. And then the rats will get you. <laughs> exactly. The sidewalk ones aren't so bad. It's the ones that are in the street. No, the sidewalk ones always were there. Yeah. You know, they always had chairs and tables outside for people who want to eat with uh, exhaust fumes. Okay. <laughs> I never found that lovely. I always wanted to go in. They want you. Would you like to eat inside or outside? Yeah. You mean outside with uh, all, all the people spitting on the pavement and, you know, the uh, the cars going by spewing exhaust fumes? And Sure, I'd like to eat out there. No, I want to eat inside. Um, but it, 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 but they, 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 these things have become bl a blight. Plus, they put these things up. And maybe let's say there are two restaurants on a, on a street. They're big. They, fill up to uh, like four parking spaces maybe five you know so that the, really there's nowhere to park in manhattan any longer either uh, shecky was thinking of coming in one time and he said but there's no place to park anymore yeah unless you want to pay 50 dollars an hour for a goddamn garage hmm. yeah again i didn't go you know as you know to steve's for lunch the other day it's like I would have taken the subway. You know, I wasn't going to drive in. Right. Right. So, and then went. we're going to have congestion park um, driving or whatever the hell it is below 60th Street. Yeah. Well, what were you going to say, um, uh, Mandy? Sorry, I thought I thought Rick was done. Um, my daughter informed me yesterday that she's, I guess, moving to New York in like two weeks. Wow. Oh, wow. so maybe we'll get to see you. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, I don't know how she's, you know, I don't know how she's why, going. Why, is there a reason why she's moving to New York? I mean, does she like rats that eat pizza? <laughs> <laughs> she wants to get a job there and work. And, you know, she was a fashion major, so she wants to do oh, that. Well, I, this has got to be the place to be, I would imagine. Oh. You know. And then she could be a social influencer. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we'll see how that works out. I was informed. I didn't think she was going until later, but she told me she was going September first. So, well, I mean, is she sure of that, or is that just you know? No, she she said like she had an interview today, and then I guess she's just going to find out. Like she's got a roommate lined up. Oh, okay. So she, you know. But I'm thinking when you were talking about the parking, I just know she's not going to take her car. Like, oh, no, don't. No, forget the car. Leave no, it, the car. Tell her to tell her to bring the car and do what I did a long time ago. Leave it at Shecky's place. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have a double driveway, as I always like to say. Yeah. <laughs> More than welcome to park in, in the right side. Yeah. Like, um, but she wouldn't do that. Well, what time did when did I do that? When I did park out there and I had a car from somewhere, but I can't remember when I did it, Jackie. I'm was that like 1980 or something? No, it wasn't then. I didn't drive Not a car. since I've known you. Hmm? You've never had a car since I've known you. No, no. I I got rid of my last car in 2000. When did we come out, Jackie? Three, 2004. I thought it was earlier than that. No, I think it was 2003. I think a lot of people from Atlanta want to live in New York. Well, at least I, I, there was another girl that was my daughter's age that I knew through coaching and stuff. Well, of course you want to live here. We don't have Marjorie Taylor Green. <laughs> <laughs> but she just moved there. She's a dancer. Yeah, but we have Donald Trump. So let's. Yeah. No, we don't. Yeah, no, we don't. So. He's Not no anymore. longer. He's Not a, anymore. No longer a, uh, a uh, New York City resident. The Floridian. That's right. He's a Floridian. Yeah, uh, but we got Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> oh, well. Rudy. Oh, yeah. Who I think is suing some state for like $100 million for how dare they treat him like this. You know. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably Georgia, I would imagine. <laughs> Might be. You got yeah, I think, actually, you, I think it you, is. Bring it on, buddy. <laughs> Mandy, you, you you've got to be so confused down there because on one hand you have like Stacey Abrams who's wonderful, you know, and then you've got Marjorie Taylor Green, all no. all in the same state. Yeah, yeah, yeah but and Marjorie Taylor Green's going to get reelected because no offense to Mandy. People in Georgia are not the brightest bulbs in the world. <laughs> well, the <laughs> That's her. Like, I think she was unopposed or something weird last time. There, last time she had no opponent. Yeah. There's somebody running against her that I'm thinking might win. But. She's in the yeah. gerrymandered district, so, you know. True. Yeah. But, uh, um, Mandy, were you born and raised in Georgia? Yes. Yeah. Because I, I thought you were because you have the accent. <laughs> Yes. And while you can acquire an accent, because like my ex-wife, Ronnie, uh, when we moved to Texas, when she left, she had a Texas mm -hmm. accent for a good year after that, mm -hmm. because Southern accents are very easy to kind of like fall into. Yeah. Because they're kind of relaxed and, you know, mm -hmm. and listen to Scott Boddicker. Scott, you're a good Texas boy, right? No, I wouldn't say that. He's an <laughs> Iowa boy. Oh, he's, he's a bad an Texas Iowa boy. boy. I'm in Iowa now. My family accuses me of having a Texas accent. Mm -hmm. You know something, though? You might have picked it up from living there. I'm it's sure. very infectious. It's very infectious. I yeah, but isn't Southern that accents... also like in New York, the old Brooklyn accent? Sure. Oh, I can talk like that. Dude, we can all talk <laughs> like that. I need time. <laughs> Want to see my dog? <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, what was the thing they, what was the thing they did on Second City years ago? Was the uh, how to speak New York? 
<laughs> and it was like, uh, all right, repeat after me. Give me a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, I like coffee. What do you want it with? Sugar. Sugar. <laughs> Other than that, no sugar, which is regular. <laughs> in fact, in New York, if you order, you, people don't know this. Pay attention, Mandy, because you're going to be coming to New York to see your daughter. I get That's right. If you order coffee here mm -hmm. and you want it without cream, you want it black, what do you ask for, Shecky? Uh, coffee black? No. Come right. on, you're a New Yorker. Jeff. Uh, the coffee right, right. It's not regular. It's regular. Not regular. Regular. I'm oh, not, Alex. Huh? How do you like when I first moved here, I thought regular had to be like with milk, with milk or something like that. Yeah. Regular is no milk. That's yeah. that's not true. What do you mean it's not true? <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? You're from Pennsylvania. <laughs> You're down there from where? Where'd you go to school? Rape Rape University. What was the name of it? <laughs> Penn State. State. Penn State. Oh wow! I used to live near there. Yeah. Where? Uh, Lewistown. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever get hit on by? Do you ever get hit on by Joe Paterno by any? <laughs> yeah. We actually used to go to the games when I was like eight or nine years old. We'd go to the go to the football. God, now, there, 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 there was a guy that was a hero, right, Marjorie? Yep. You couldn't say anything wrong about Joe Paterno. There was a statue in front of uh, the stadium. They got yeah. rid of it though, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. I think they renamed the stadium too. I think it was Paterno Stadium, wasn't it? Well, let me let's face it. If a guy is your hero because he won a lot of football games for you, okay, why, if he does something bad, does it suddenly negate all those wins? Cancel culture. Two words. Yeah. It, <laughs> just it, ask OJ. Just ask OJ. <laughs> right. You mean the guy used to run over, jump over suitcases? <laughs> <laughs> he could do anything. No, it, it really is amazing how we negate somebody. Some uh, who? What, what's his name? He has a thing on Showtime about let's talk about Cosby. Mm. He, he makes a case about Cosby. The Cosby for years. Forget all the bad that he did for a second. You know, Chappelle has a bit about it, too. He says, forget about all the horrible things that he did to these women. Think about all the good things he did, like fun black colleges, you know, and uh, and all that sort of thing. And yet all that goes out, flies out the window. Now it is Bill Cosby, the rapist, you know. And yeah, what he did was terrible. But on the other hand, does that negate all the good he did? And then I think what Chappelle said Okay, for all the good he did and all the bad he did, which one would you rather remember him for? <laughs> you know, the good he did, or do you want to just give back all that money for all the colleges that got money from him? So it, it's it's a good question. I mean, how much do we negate somebody's good because of the bad they do? And some of them do bad stuff. You know, I mean, Cosby, uh, what a what a piece of work that guy is. You know. Uh, on the other hand, Weinstein never did anything good for anybody. So that, mm. that True. you know, except uh, well, since the first row the Academy Award ceremonies. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it, it's funny listening to Quentin Tarantino or Kevin Smith uh, talk about Weinstein, uh, Harvey Weinstein, because you know he was to them a mentor. And he helped guide their careers and all that. And how oh, a Tarantino, every one of his pictures up until the last one was produced by Weinstein. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and Kevin Smith as well. And and they talk about how he was a mentor to them. And and uh I think I don't I don't remember where I was listening to Tarantino. It might have been on Rogan, but he, he was talking about that and how um, you know, he wishes he could go back to, you know, talk sense into him or or something like that, but it's Guys like that are so conflicted by other people who would just immediately consider Harvey Weinstein a well, monster. It, it, yeah, it's, but on it's the other very, hand, very interesting. This is subject. I've I've heard Tarantino actually throw him to the wolves. Uh, which you know, I went, come on, you know, if, if let's talk for a moment about Gwyneth Paltrow. All right, 
Best night. First of all, well, yeah, first of all, Rick, tell people how you win an Academy Award. You have sex with? Uh... No, 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 no. Barring <laughs> that, barring that, how do you win somebody? Uh, he uh, wines to use. Well, no, to... she got rid of the other actress, if I remember correctly. No, here, here's, what I'm, here's what I'm Elizabeth referring to. Love or whatever that film was. Yeah, but here, here's here's what I'm referring to. I'm referring to how do you win an Academy Award? You spend a lot of money advertising, paying off people, getting people to vote. Okay. Weinstein, whenever he had a movie that was up for an Academy Award, would spend a fortune making sure that it won. The reason he won a lot was because he put the money, the effort, the publicity, the promotion mm -hmm. into getting it to win. Mm -hmm. And so if Gwyneth Paltrow won an Academy Award for Shakespeare in Love, which she did, in which she was not particularly... And would you ever watch that film in your lifetime again? I, I No, no. And who who won for best actress for the shortest role, the least amount of lines ever to win an Academy Award? Uh, Dame was it Judy Dench? Mm. She played uh, the Queen. In that was it Dench? Yeah, it was Dench. Um, she had like ten lines, and she won an Academy Award for best supporting actress because of Weinstein advertising, promoting, mm. greasing palms, whatever it takes. So Paltrow, who, God, you can't believe that woman ever won an Academy Award, but she did for that picture, which you can't, as Shecky says, remember. She then throws Harvey to the wolves. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry, Gwyneth, but, you know, you have a career now because of Harvey Weinstein. You don't have to come to his defense, but don't throw him to the wolves. Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah, but she's also, you know, with her crappy, you know, as I always joke, selling vagina balls. <laughs> you, know, you know, something else you've got to, you know, at this moment. Yeah, yeah. What is a vagina ball? I, look, I'm not a woman. Let's, I don't know. Let's let Mandy uh, field that question. I'm muted now. Um, I don't get her. I don't at all. We've yeah. joked about or how she has those crazy candles, like <laughs> the candle that smells like my vagina or whatever. Yeah, that yeah. my <laughs> vagina smells like this candle. Yeah, okay. yeah. crazy. She's just well, goop. isn't it called goop? But people, but people buy this crap. Yeah, yeah. Well, Man, how do they go? Goop. How do they go from being an actress to selling goop? <laughs> you know, I mean, what's that jump you make? You know. Well, it seems like all this happened when she was married to um, Chris, whatever his name is, from Hemsworth. No, oh, she was Chris, the guy, oh, the guy oh, from, oh, yeah. Oh, what was the name? Chris, uh, uh, what's his name? You guys are talking about Coldplay. Coldplay. Yeah, Coldplay, yeah. Chris Pratt, is that the name? No. no Maybe no. I'm wrong. Chris, oh, I'm trying to remember his name. Coldplay. Anyway, his name Apple. That's right. They named the kid Apple. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I don't I don't get into all that stuff. You They're, know, or like this weekend, there was that um whatever I can't think of her name right this second had the wedding to the other guy. And it's like you know, we took over a whole hotel. It's like you're not talking about Ben Affleck and, and yeah, yeah. 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 No, that's that's his home that he's owned for. No, no, they took over a whole hotel. No, yeah. there was the second wedding, I think. Yeah. Oh, no, but they, 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 they did their know. wedding, their original wedding in Vegas. Then they held the second wedding at this mansion he's got down in down in Savannah. Georgia, maybe Savannah. or somewhere. Yeah, it's in Savannah. It's not a hotel. He maybe well, maybe maybe. It but looks yeah. like it could be a hotel, but it isn't. It's it's been his home ever since he was with her before. Right. And do you really think in two years they will not be divorced? Maybe I'm wrong. I think it's this time for sure. I really, I think it'll last. I, I, do I actually do think that too. Because at her age, where's she going to go? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Alex Rodriguez? I don't know. Do, do we care? Yeah. Right. No, right. but that's the other thing. 
do we care? What is it though about the American public that likes to venerate and 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 live the life that these people live through them? Mm -hmm. You know, full page in the post hit. I think it maybe is page am five. Am I supposed or to care? About, am I supposed to care about Jennifer Lopez? I have nothing against her, but I don't care. You know, who who never sang, by the way, before she met Diddy. Mm. Right. Uh, yeah, she did. Was she was Selena. I think she did. I mean, she I think was she Selena. Was she yeah. wasn't known yeah. for that. Actually, she was a very good actress. Yeah. Yeah, but her breakout role was Selena, where she sang. Wasn't, wasn't that a voiceover, well. Mike? Mike, was, oh, that was it? I, I think it might have been. Oh, gosh. I don't know. By the way, it's Chris Martin. I'm going to look up right now to see Thank if you. Selena was a right, voiceover. Right, right. It was Chris Martin. Yeah. But yeah. it's almost like I feel pity for her because. She, even though she's like beautiful and rich, you know, so talented, she does like has a very rotten record with relationships. Like to me, she's the common denominator. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well, she, it could be she's just not that easy to be with. Right. And she's not that great an actress. Yeah. You know, she was pretty damn good for a while there. I thought she was, I liked her as an actress. I liked her in that George Clooney film that they did where he was in prison. There was one where she was like a battered woman and she was trying yeah, to escape enough. Yeah. Or, or her daughter. I can't remember what it was called. Well, that, yeah, that was a film called Tempora about slightly battered women. No. <laughs> it was called Enough was the name of it. Thank you. That, I thought that that was very suspenseful and like, you know, dramatic. Yeah. You know, the one I actually kind of like is Selena Gomez. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I forget if I've ever told this on the show, your show, my Selena Gomez story. Well, tell us your Selena Gomez story, because there's so few people who have Selena Gomez stories. So I'm on the elevator at Letterman, and the elevator stops at three, and this young girl gets on, very nice. And I'm just like, in the back of my mind, I think, oh, she's one of our former interns. Mm -hmm. And a couple of days later, one of the talent coordinators goes, you are on the elevator with Selena Gomez? And it's like, huh? <laughs> but she was, in, I, I have to admit, incredibly pleasant for our three, you know. Your three floors? <laughs> our three floor ride, as we call it. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to think of who I, I, I met up with at, at, at the airport. Who was it? Who was the actor? Who was in an a, 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 a officer and a gentleman? Um, Deborah Winger. Deborah, 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 Deborah Winger. Deborah Winger. Deborah Winger. Oh. I wrote. I'm, 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 I'm going with, to. Um, some comedian back in the. I'm going to Paris. Area. Well, I'm what? going. I'm going to Paris, right? And I'm in the San Francisco airport. And it was that time when no plane took off on time, and now we're three hours mm -hmm. running late taking off. Nothing has changed. And, and so finally, no. finally, I started protesting it, and 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 then. This other woman joined me and we started protesting it together and we made a loud noise and we were, we're getting everybody to chant. We want to see a representative, you know, we want to see a representative from the airline and we're just making trouble like hell. And they told us, if you don't uh, stop it, we're going to have to, you know, and I uh, we're going to have to not let you on the plane. And as it was, they put me in first class to shut me up. Uh -huh. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now I know how to get first class. But the two of us protested. Well, now I get to New York and I get a call from somebody in San Francisco and said, are you going with Deborah Winger? <laughs> well, she, she went out with, what was the comedian? Um, Gary? Shandling? Something? No, it wasn't Shandling. I don't know. But anyway, they're, they're but, asking. They're asking me if I'm going with, I went, no, I'm not going with Deborah Winger. What makes anybody think it? Well, it was in Herb Cain's column today. <laughs> but the two of you were seen at the airport protesting together these flights. And I went, that was Deborah Winger? So for at least yeah. a brief moment, I was going with Deborah Winger. Right. Yeah, that's like me again with Selena Gomez, where it's like, huh? For a few minutes, Shecky was going with Selena and Gomez. <laughs> I, I think you, you traded up, Alex. <laughs> okay, just to do. Just well, I guess, Len, you're in good stead with Marjorie Miller. 
Yes. <laughs> I know we're getting close to the end. So if we're going to do some fact checking. Okay. So yes, it is indeed Chris Martin. Of course, Selena, uh, JLo, JLo did not sing in Selena. So that was right. Lynn was right with that. Um, and are you talking about for Denver winger, Bob, uh, Bob Curie? No, it was the, I, I don't Marlis want to Howard, Indian, Timothy Hutton. a Native American actor, comedian, mm. but it was something right. with the person. It was Gary. And I can't, I just can't think of, because she was working as a, I believe, a waitress at one of the San Francisco comedy clubs at one point in the 70s. Really? Also the comedy. You're not talking about or Gary Mule Deer, store. are you? Yeah, Gary Mule Deer. Oh. Oh. Gary Mule Deer. How many here remember Gary Mule Deer? Anybody? Yeah, I do. Never he, he does. Okay. Yeah, but no, she she was going out with Gary Mule Deer. Oh, okay. And Alex Bennett. So. <laughs> J-Lo. one last thing about j-lo when you mentioned the singing let me just say this she does put out some really good cardio tracks with pitbull for working out <laughs> okay. they have to be with pitbull so. with pitbull okay hey listen and i wouldn't know pitbull if you walked in my room right now. <laughs> right I was just yeah. say that. oh well you're just not with it shaky no. no but when you go to Vietnam to Saigon, nobody there's going to know who Pitbull is either. So <laughs> you're being probably more I, people I, than I would. Yeah, I think Saigon <laughs> is now called Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, right. no, oh, uh, Saigon is Ho Chi Minh. No, Ho Chi Minh City is in the north. No, oh, isn't that's, that North, that's Hanoi. north Vietnam? Hanoi, Hanoi became Ho Chi Minh City, didn't yes, it? Hanoi. Yeah. No. No, I think so. Saigon did. Really? Saigon did. Yes. Oh. Yes. What does it say on your ticket, Jackie? <laughs> I don't have a ticket yet, so I don't know. I'll look it up after the show. It says $9,000 is what it says. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it thank says, you, Char- it says too out, much money. Yeah. Thank you, Charlie Wallace. Appreciate <laughs> it. And uh, Scott Boddicker, always a pleasure. Uh, 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 Mike Chisholm, thank you. And say hello to Candace for us. You got it. Len LaFrisco, thank you. Always nice seeing you here. That wallpaper is distinctive and <laughs> really only yours. Uh, Jeff Stein, thank you so much. Looks so nice, that background you've got there. It looks like oh, really? a greenhouse or something. Yeah, <laughs> very nice. A Andy, always a pleasure talking to you. And you know, it's somebody who we can feel sorry for living in Georgia. But. Thanks. <laughs> Rick Sheckman, thank you. Marjorie Miller, uh, is that how you pronounce your name? <laughs> <laughs> and Vernon Nunn. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye at oh, you. Okay. What about Edward? <laughs> oh, 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 wait a minute. Oh, and I, see, because I always skip him because I have to save him for the last. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please say a big goodbye as Edward Berger says. That's all, folks. That's all he says for the whole hour. Bye-bye, everybody. (laughs) See you later.